This is the fourth video in our series about building box or pancake type stairs. So I'm going to provide you with a different design here along with all of the measurements for it. Now the first thing I want to point out is the riser height on this can vary because this last step is a landing. It's 36 inches by 36 inches which is the minimum for most building codes. And of course you would need to check with your building codes to verify any of the information in this video. But what this does is separates the risers here because this would be a separate flight of stairs than this one. So the floor level here could actually be even with the top of the landing or it could be another riser, whatever the maximum riser height is in your area. So for example here we have 7 inch riser, a 7 inch riser, and this riser here could be 2 inches to 7 and 3 quarter inches or even 8 inches if your building codes allow it. So that's what's nice about this design here. And of course the 45 degree step here and of course that would be the angle here. So we have a 45 degree angle here and we have 45 degree angles over here. And you'll be able to cut the angles where the lumber intersects with either a 45 degree angle here or two 22 and a half degree angles over here. And let's go ahead and break this thing down here a little bit further so that we can break out some measurements. And I believe the spacing here is about 16 inches on center. And that only includes this bay and this bay. This one here is a little wider. This one's a little smaller. And you can always move this one over a little bit. But as long as we're using 2 by 6, then we can span those up to 24 inches. And don't forget to fasten the stairway down to the dirt or the concrete or decking, whatever you're using. And you can find more information about that in the first video in the series. And of course, you're going to be building this in sections. And like I said in the beginning, I do have all of the measurements here. You can go ahead and take a look at them. Now, I drew this in my computer modeling program. It's usually extremely accurate. However, I have not built this one myself, meaning that it might be beneficial for you to check all these measurements. And let us know in the comment area if any of them are incorrect. And of course, all of these measurements are from the long point. So you can see here the long point. This would be the short point. This is a short point. This is a short point. And of course, these angles are each 22 and a half degrees. This one over here is 22 and a half degrees. And the rest are all 90 degrees. And to lay the decking out, we are going to space them an eighth inch apart. And this really isn't going to be difficult to do. What I would do is have all of the boards extend past this line here and then come straight up here. You can use a level or a square to get this mark here and then simply go over to the other side and do the same thing so that you can use a straight edge or a chalk line to create a nice straight line here that you will be able to cut with a circular saw. Or you can place each board into position and then simply mark each one individually from the bottom with a pencil. So do whatever works for you. And I like to do the first one that I suggested because I can get a nice straight line here with my circular saw. And after you have built the first box, we can go ahead and start on the second box. But before we do that, I just want you to take a look at this here. This is going to waste a little bit more lumber and could make it difficult when cleaning out any debris that passes through the decking, which means you could do something like this. Now, I'm not going to provide you with the measurements here. You should be able to figure this one out on your own. And of course, you could always modify this if you needed to. And don't worry about the decking boards sticking over a little bit. Or if you are, just simply move this board over to here. And I think that's exactly what I would do. Which means you'll just have to cut this board here a little bit longer. Now that we have this done, we can go ahead and take a look at the measurements that we need here to create the upper stair step box. And you could always add more boards if you need to, more joist. But by now you should have a pretty good idea how to assemble something like this. And the last thing I want to point out in the video is that you can always reverse this. You can basically flip it over if you need the stairway to go in the opposite direction. 
And that wraps this video up. If you learned something or you appreciated the effort that went into making this video, make sure you let us know in the comment area.